Hi, I'm Phoenix, and today we are going to interview Lonnie Manella, who does the voices for Nancy Drew and many other games in the video game ah, world. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, those are some of the birds' voices from two of our Nancy Drew games that we have, and our avid fans know who they are. So, Lonnie, how long have you been a voice actor? Well, probably from the moment you go. <laughs> but no, probably for money, you mean? I would say. Cool. Decades. Decades. You know, we're talking way, way, way long. Heck, I've been Nancy Drew for 14 years, mm. and I had a lot of history before that. So, you know, it's been quite a while. When did you start, I guess, not getting paid that when you just did it for fun? Was that? Oh, and in, in a crack up in class because I was bored, and so I would always imitate the teacher, like the, the Gunther Schultz, the teacher in Germany, you know, in German. And I, I don't know, it was just because I was so bored, I guess I'd be always whispering to somebody and imitating things. Even today, when I see a newscast, and she said, okay, then today the weather's gonna be. Really nasally, so I, I will sometimes catch myself. And you sound like her for like two words, just because it's not me making fun of it. It's, it's maybe kind of reacting and just putting myself in in that person's shoes for a second, thinking like, how did they ever hire these people? You know. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I think it's just an imitating kind of a thing that I was always good at and get an ear to. But I really like cartoons, and so I'm amazed at what the animators do. Oh yeah. It's, even on Nancy Drew games, I mean, it's. I don't think the actors should get the credit first. It should be the script writers, and then it should be the animators because then they put a lot of the life, yeah. especially Disney and Pixar and all those I people. I love those movies. Great. Yeah, I know. So if you close your eyes and listen to Cameron Diaz in um, Shrek, mm -hmm. it's not that interesting. <laughs> but then you look at all the over-exaggerated things, and that's not something that most of the actors do. I've been actually filmed where they want us to do things to help the um, animators, but most voice actors don't because they're very concentrating on keeping their eyes on the script and not making mouth noises yeah. and, you know, bumping into the microphone and all that kind of stuff. So it's a, that's a special thing. And games are definitely a different genre than every other thing, including cartoons, because games are normally where you have to do a lot more of the... <laughs> <laughs> you know, that kind yeah, of you got to add that in, too. That. Yeah, definitely. Well, how did you get... Um, what made you get started? in voice acting. Was it like those teachers, like you said before? No, that's what got me the bad citizenship marks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think getting started, I was going to be in radio. I was in radio when I was in college. And um, then uh, they always wanted me to be morning drive because morning drive wants to take everything that's topical, whatever, whoever, and whatever issues in the newspaper that day. It was always a spontaneity and having to do uh, calling up if it was uh, Joan Rivers' birthday and being Joan Rivers. Yeah. Oh, can we talk here? You know, or, <laughs> you know, maybe they would want me to be Margaret Thatcher because she did something and no one's ever heard Margaret Thatcher before. <laughs> It's a couple of years when they made the movie about her, you know. Right. So it was just uh, the radio transcended into that. And then I had a company call me up who was pitching the laser disc. This is how old it was. Um, and they said, can you do the voices from Fern Gully for our sales pitch? Oh, yeah. And then they had me going from that into doing some of their children's games. And I said, who else does this? And so I started going to the trade shows and eventually formulated AudioGods.com because I found out that as an individual actor, it was very difficult to find work. So I managed to have have a one-stop shop where I could provide everybody, you know, all the talent and the sound and the editing and anything else. And that's how I actually uh, got into doing about 500 titles now. So that's been exciting. That's awesome. Well, okay. Well, you do so many different voices. Do you ever, you've got to have been tempted to use your skills for evil at some point, you know, pull a voice prank on someone or. Oh, well, that's what they want you to do in radio. But I think it, I always like to treat people the way that I'd like to be treated. So I would, I would grimace when I'd have to do that, you know, playing pranks yeah and that actually backfired on me once because in san really? diego where i live mm -hmm. they were doing a uh, search for a morning show on tv right yeah and um i would call to arrange a, an audition and nobody would return my call so i called as joan rivers <laughs> I said, oh can we try this as joan rivers and he, oh joan you know? <laughs> and i said oh when, when are you gonna do your little interview can i come and keep me to the show oh. and they said such and such and i went Oh, I'm going to be busy. There. Can my assistant Lonnie Manella come in for, <laughs> instead of me? And they said, sure, I guess. And then I called up because I'm so honest. I called right back yeah. and I said, oh, this is Joan again. I just want to tell you, I'm so honest. I'm not really Joan, I'm Lonnie. <laughs> and they got so mad that oh. when they had already arranged my interview, they gave me 30 seconds. 
And so that can backfire on you. Nobody likes to be the fool. Mm -hmm. And I think it's best to keep it along the nice side. But yeah, I think that um, it's fun to do voices, Mm -hmm. but not at the expense of anybody else. Okay. All right. I can I can see why you only use your voices for use your power for good and not evil. (laughs) Well, like to be evil, but only for games and such. (laughs) Oh, that's good. That's good because you do a great job doing that. Thank you. Uh, okay, I have a, another question. Do you have have you ever had a Nancy Drew moment? And a lot of fans say sometimes they'll encounter something and they find themselves saying it's locked, you know, and then <laughs> yeah. immediately they think of Nancy Drew. Yeah, haven't we all? It's locked. I'm lost. Um, it won't open. Yes, I mean all those kind of things that you hear over and over again. Yeah. Definitely. But I think what I really like about the Nancy Drew, which I wish I had, is that when you play these games, sometimes even the younger kids, even myself, when on Secrets of Shadow Ranch, where you had to feed the horses and you didn't have the right size measuring cups, yeah. you inadvertently learn math. Yes. You know. So I really like that aspect of it. That it sometimes can teach you things, uh, and you still have fun doing it. So that. That's, that's my Nancy Drew moment. I wish I had more of those. That was fun. And yeah, uh, yeah. look forward to those. But um, Okay, another Nancy Drew question. What is your favorite part about being Nancy Drew? Getting to do the voices for so long. So what's the best part about, you know, getting to say, yes, I'm Nancy Drew. Thank you. <laughs> I think the fans and the people I get to work with at Her Interactive. Because it is just, they've just always been so phenomenal. Oh, yeah. And so fun to work with and so prepared Mm -hmm. and uh, just nice and that everything has been really really a positive experience and um, the storylines are just remarkable and I used to read the books as a kid I keep saying how are you guys getting all these stories you know and they just like to keep it fun and those puzzles forget it I can't can't do them very well but I I really enjoy the fact that every now and then they let me get away with another character that they hadn't imagined you know whether it's an answer machine or it's parrot or a monster or something like that or the little girl that you threw snowballs at? Freddy. Frankie? Fred, Fred. Frankie, how are you going to hate Frankie? No, no, no. Yeah. It was Freddy, no. Freddy. Freddy? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Sorry, Frank. It's your. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I mean, oh. probably out of spite, we can call her Frank. So you do so many voices like Freddy and Cuckoo and Lulu and, of course, like hundreds of others. How do you keep track of all the different voices that you do? You don't as much as you have a, an area. Like, if you're going to be old, you could be a nice old lady from Tweety, like Grandma. Or you could be like an old guy. But if you're trying to match something you already did, you have to have them send you a file. <laughs> because what you, even on Nancy Drew, I have to make sure that you've sent me what you want as the good Nancy matchup for that. Right game just to make sure we're always in the same good place so I don't necessarily keep good track but I'm fortunate enough to let people tell me no yes maybe but um I think I've just done so many for such a long time and I keep trying new ones and that's maybe why I imitate people is yeah I'm going okay I don't actively seek to add to my library <laughs> because I lead such a sheltered busy life that's why I'm telling you if you want to do voices expose you know your mind and your you know go out to restaurants go out to places and listen yeah because some of your best characters will be from real people. Mm, yeah, that's that's true. And that lady with the girl with the braces. Uh huh. You know, yeah. People with with some sort of a, a speech impediment, uh, something like that. So if, even if you're just making fun of it, not in front of them, of but you're going home and making faces in the mirror, mm. you know, putting your lower jaw out in your thirst and hell, uh-huh. or crinkling your face up with a stinky nose, going, "Oh man, that sucks." You know, mm-hmm. those kinds of things are are just fun to play with. So I don't necessarily have a library; I have a range, and so we can always dip into whether you want it low or. <laughs> I used to make the, uh, faces in the mirror. My parents used to tell me that. They said they'd catch me like making sad faces in the mirror and like practicing. They're like, are you practicing your cry? Like, what are you doing? I used to get in trouble. But I think I was just really interested in seeing the facial expressions because, of course, I make these facial expressions, but I never know what I look like. So I, I wanted to like, you know, practice. Ah. I wanted to see what I look like in the mirror. And then when I tell stories, people say, you make the funniest faces. I'm like, well, I don't know what I look like when I'm making these faces. So I, I, why do I care? And I'm going to exaggerate my story. Very good to be yeah. You've got to be expressive. And that's one thing that people don't realize is that the more body movement, even facial movement that you do over exaggerate to the point of Jim Carrey, <laughs> the better acting it will be. Not to say I'm going to talk like this and over emote. Right. But if you add your body and your face really puts the motion in games which are not Pixar and Disney. So you go, get away from her. And you're going, swap with your with a backhand like you have a tennis racket. Yeah. You just whack the ball. So that's very important. You can't just go, oh, eh, uh, eh. Uh. It's much better if you're punching and doing judo chops in the you're like, that kind of thing. Um, 
and you use your consonants when you're attacking and it's a little bit more vowely when you're getting her like <laughs> <laughs> but not don't go a e i o <laughs> yeah yeah so and sometimes yeah why <laughs> Instead of, I guess, just voices, you also do inanimate objects as well? Oh, gosh, yes. And then <laughs> trying to make the sound of a bowling ball, what would that sound like? Oh, you just try and kind of picture what it looks like or what the texture would be like mm -hmm. and, and picture like a... What's a rug going to sound like? Pretty flat, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. You just kind of have to imagine something. And it all depends on who you're working with too for anyone who doesn't know you i know i've i've looked at you up on like wikipedia and seen your bio of all the crazy games but you do you want to throw out some of the names for some of the kind of big companies and games that you have done voices for for anyone who only knows you as nancy drew and <laughs> any guys who are listening who might be like oh shit. oh god yeah. yeah yeah they probably would like the blizzard games and, uh -huh. and things uh world of warcraft and starcraft and uh, diablos and all those and and from very long ago which is probably older than anybody remembers i I sense a soul in search of answers. I was Adria the Witch, and oh, I'm worth the peg leg boy. Come here, I want to sell you some useless stuff. <laughs> and that's all from Diablo. And I've been lots of end bosses that are male that most people don't realize, even in the world of Warcraft. And being the Tuscar and the Geist and um, the dropship pilot from uh, In the Five. Bye bye five. I copy that, that from Starcraft. And I was the Zerg Queen, and that was fun doing all kinds of <laughs> that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, then there was StarCraft II and the Medevac pilot um, on that. I think it's funny because now I'm in Rift. Uh, that's another big, massive multiplayer. And yeah. Star Trek Online, uh, that's probably their most profitable thing. They're going to be starting Neverwinter. But that's probably not going to fully take place until next April. So there's a little bit of heads up there. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just been amazing how many different things from learning games and, um, you know, even phone answering things. I just did a... Thank you for calling. And in British, that I do British answering things yeah. uh, for St. Lucia Hotel and Barbados. And I did the announcing for all this hotel award ceremony for the Caribbean and uh, all these different islands. So it's, it's an interesting thing. And you don't stop and think about it too much because they never give you time to go, what did I just do yesterday? Yeah. Um, gosh, you know. But it is a, a pretty cool thing to say that uh, I'm not this, I don't think anyway, this icon i appreciate when people, people think of yeah, that some people would disagree but, <laughs> you know but i've never been one to want to get paid or do autographs because i'm thinking i'm just a human <laughs> but it's really been enjoyable and i really wish you the very best in your pursuits oh thank you thank you okay i've got one more personal question sure. what's your favorite uh voice to do you've got to have a favorite because you do so many <laughs> i love to do evil things yes. but uh you know the voice that most <laughs> can pitch and make sound monstrous is not really a voice. <laughs> it's me rattling my cords with a lot of air across it. And so that's where the fun part is getting the ad living. And uh, but the, the thing that I think that I do that that might be unique is that one. It takes an awful lot, and after doing it for a considerable amount of time, you can't even drink water. It, it does such a, a bad thing on your throat. But that's what I say to everybody. Um, nowadays, you get an audition from an agent, and it will say on the bottom, it will have a disclaimer. Could be very taxing on your voice. If you if that bothers you, please do not audition for this game. Oh, okay. Well, that's I guess yeah. that's nice. They put a warning label on that. That's so right. You know what you're so getting into. Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, everybody out there, if you want to lose your voice for a while and, and uh, have at it, there's no prima donnas. If they are, they don't work with me. Yeah. So, anyway, I hope everybody has a really great time, and then we're going to miss you. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I'm going to I'm gonna miss everyone here, too. I try not to cry in my goodbye video, you know, and just keep it very, just keep it very simple and everything. And I'm also going to be glad to be going back and seeing my family, you know, but her interact has been like my second family. I've been the home away from home. So it's been nice. And where is your home again? I live in North Carolina and wow. I know it's crazy. I actually used to live in California. I grew up in California, but when I was 14 years old, my dad got a job transfer. So it moved us all the way to the East coast and I've been living ever up there ever since it must be pretty there though oh yeah yeah it's gorgeous it's green you know during the summertime and it's just it's great it's humid right now so mm -hmm. gonna be going back to that more heat over there well pretend it's hawaii yeah yeah i'll just you know i'll <laughs> go out and, and sunbathe and, and yeah and you're gonna maybe put out somewhere how we can find you in the future yes yes if i continue with vlogs in the future i'll definitely like put that out 
trapped somehow, yeah. somewhere. So, someone will find it, and then they'll spread it to another friend, and then, you know, it'll if if it wants to, it'll it'll spread and it'll get out there. But you know, we'll see. Definitely. I mean, like I'm still gonna exist. I haven't like dropped off the face of the earth, so I'm not gonna just be like, bye, this is it, everyone, peace out. It's been. And nice. the next time you hear her, she will undergo a coaching session, <laughs> and she's going to do all kinds of neat voices, and maybe in your next <laughs> Nancy Drew game. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you again. And it's been great hearing from you. And yep, that's all, that's all we have for today. So thanks. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye.